what a day! What a lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. We're going to be taking a look at the second model of knives to be introduced by Null Knives, a rather new knife company, knife brand out in the industry. And as much as I liked the very first Null Knives project that I brought out to you, oh, I like this a lot more. And, you know, the other one it was no slouch, but it was a lot more... I don't even want to say traditional because the, the designs that are being put out by them are rather unique. They are rather aggressive. But I find this to be a lot more unique. I find this to be a lot more desirable. And there is absolutely no way that you can pick up one of these, play with it for more than five seconds, and not be madly in love with it. It's lightweight for its size. It's got an incredible action. It's got the, oh, I, I just screwed that up. I was going to demonstrate the uh, fidgetability, and I screwed it all up. But it does have great fidgetability with these thumb studs, with this slot. And yeah, the, the backside slot. You could do all kinds of slotty things with it. But overall, I think that this is going to be one of those knives that if you own a lot of knives. If you EDC and you change out to different knives all the time, you're always looking for something interesting and exciting and something that's going to capture your imagination. And I think that this sitting in your collection, you're always going to reach for it. You're going to look at it and go, it is vastly different in its design and aesthetics than anything else that I own. It's very futuristic. It's got some great lines to it, great materials being used. The, 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 the action and the, uh, the, the, the fun of it is great. But when you start looking across your entire collection, you'll see that a lot of things in your collection will share some similarities. And maybe that's going to be in the uh, blade shapes or in the materials being used or just the basic overall design may have some, some familiarity. This, I believe, is going to stand out within your collection, no matter how vast your collection is, and it's going to be so different that you're going to find yourself drawn to it all the time. Now, a lot of times we'll buy something that is dramatically different than other things that we have, but sometimes they tend to be so different in, in their design that they may not be practical. They may not be knives that you're going to carry all the time because you're like, well, it's definitely cool, but it's so way out there. The blade shape is so wacky uh, that I just don't see how I'm really going to be using it. Or it's so overly designed that the handle isn't comfortable. There may be some restrictions to knives that you buy that you only buy because they're different and they're wild and they're cool. This one, I think, is going to fall right in line with what most people that collect a lot of knives are looking for. It's going to be different than everything else in your collection, but not different in a bad way. It's still going to be every bit as usable as all of your other knives. And the size of it, the weight of it, all allow for it to be easily carried. So let's go ahead and take a look at it close up and see what I think of it, see what you think of it, see if our opinions align, and get ready for the pre-order because when these drop, I honestly believe they're going to sell out immediately.
Man, I gotta tell you, it is really hard to contain my excitement when I see such a fresh and unique design. And again, as I mentioned in the intro, not so different that it becomes impractical or unusable in some way. It's just different and cool, but it still fits in with your normal everyday EDC routines. Now again, you would have to like a almost completely flat edge type of Warncliffe knife, although as you see, it's got just a little bit of shape to it. It's not completely flat. So even those that are like, well, I kind of dig how Warncliffe's look, but I don't find them to be as useful as other knife shapes, I think you're going to find a use for this knife. Now, let's get very quickly into the specs on this, just so I can get that out of the way, so I can get, you can hear the excitement in my voice, I hope, because I, I really am excited about this knife. I want to blow past all the, 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 the pedestrian stuff, like the specs and all that, and really get into showing you the details of the knife, and hopefully you guys will be as excited as I am. I think that you will be very, very easily. I'm just going to simplify the specs. Um, overall length is eight and a quarter inches, so it's not a tiny knife. It's not as small as I thought it was when I first saw Sean post pictures of it on Instagram. I kind of assumed it was going to be a fairly small knife, like a three inch blade or something, which would have played right around the seven, seven and a quarter inch overall, but no, eight and a quarter inches overall. Blade length is 3.6 inches. So that's going to be wonderfully useful for a lot of people. And I apologize for those of you that live in very restrictive states that can't carry over a three inch blade, things like that. I know that's a reality, but for the vast majority of everybody out there, they don't have much in the way of blade length restrictions. And this is going to become a very, very useful knife in their collection. Blade thickness is about 145 thousandths thick. So it's not an overly thick blade at all. I'm going to give you some comparisons here in a moment to some other knives, uh, but it's not so thin that it's going to be delicate. But that nice balance in between helps it to become as lightweight as it is. And the grind on here, believe it or not, is hollow ground. I thought it was a flat ground knife, but oh no, she is a hollow grind and beautiful finish on that hollow ground bevel as well. They did a really nice hand rub satin on this. And man, look at the swedge up top. That is a very small hollow grind. And that allows it, let's see if I can get this to focus just a little bit better. Come on. Maybe I got to get a really super duper. There we go. Now we'll do it. Look how deep the hollow is on the swedges. So they used a very small wheel on there to get that. I'm thinking probably probably a five inch wheel to get that incredible, uh, very dramatic top switch. While I've got the close up going on here, let's look at everything. Look at the way the clip has been sculpted. I love the lines, the way this has been milled. A, because it does reduce the weight a little bit, does thin it out here and here but because it really follows with the, the shapes that you see going on in the body of the knife. A lot of times, and we've talked about this before, pocket clips tend to be an afterthought and they don't really go well with the flow of the design. And Sean did a killer job here, really took his time designing something that looks fantastic. It's a fairly deep carry clip. I don't care about deep carry clips. I'm not James Bond. I'm not trying to, to sneak around with my knives. And no matter how deep carry a pocket clip is anyway, okay, so you're not seeing, you know, this much of the, the butt of the knife. You're seeing this much or, or this much, but you're still seeing the clip hanging out. And everybody knows what a pocket knife clip looks like. It doesn't look like a pen clip. It doesn't look like anything else. The clip, whatever length that clip is, one inch, two inch, three inches, it's still very much tells people you're carrying a friggin' knife. So I don't need a deep carry pocket clip. I also want to be able to grab onto that knife very, very easily and not just off a little tiny little bit that's sticking out of the pocket. And I don't want to reach into my pocket to get it. So this I find to be a great balance on that part as well. The way this has been designed as a bolster lock allows you to have the beauty on this side replicated on this side. So you don't have 
a bare naked lock side like you would see on most frame locks because they don't do anything on the back side. But by having a bolster lock, that scale material that's being used on the presentation side is also used on the lock side as well. And you get that look on both sides. Another detail uh, that, uh, that Sean does, this carries over from the Raiden, is the concave style pivot. So it's concaved in the middle and it's textured. Nice texture in there as well. Has a very handsome look. I am a huge fan of these stylized thumb studs. They look fantastic and they fit the design of the knife perfectly. Having simple round thumb studs would have been fine, but it wouldn't have gone with the overall look of the knife. There again is that really, really nice satin finish. They did a great job on these hand rubs. I, I have to applaud them. Did a great job. The jimping is good. Whether you're choked up or you're all the way back, my thumb lands right where I want that jimping to be, so that's perfect. I can do this. I can push right up against the back of the harpoon, and I can get some more delicate, precise cuts done. Oops. Beautiful. There's your lockup, by the way. And if you want to see the blade centering, there it is. And it does have the notched channel going through the back spacer. Allows more room for the blade to sit in there without making contact with the back spacer and without having to make this handle super, super tall to accommodate the height of the blade. Fits in there beautifully. Another thing I love stylistically is the tip of this blade. Very, very slick, very cool. Also, very challenging to grind without burning it up because it gets very thin and very delicate there. Nice deep pocket in the blade so whether you choose to thumb flick it you can slow roll it with the groove I mean you can thumb flick it with the groove too I was just thumb flicking with the thumb stud the reverse flicking I prefer to do with the groove instead of the thumb stud uh, your mileage may vary it's a nice fast action it's not completely drop shutty but it is very very smooth it only takes a little wiggle to get it closed and the knife is every bit as attractive closed as it is open. That looks great. It's got a little bit of sharpness on the back side of the harpoon. Be warned on that. Uh, you can feel that when the knife is closed. It's not super sharp, but there is a little sharp edge there. Um, I would make the suggestion for sure, since these have not been made yet, to have them just very lightly roll over that with a with with whatever this final grit is, which I would say is probably 400 grit. I would go over that with 400 or 600 grit just to very lightly roll that over. It'll still have the same sharp look to it, but it won't actually feel like it's going to cut into you. Beautiful, beautiful all the way around. Again, I'm going to say it, this is a knife that is so beautiful and so well made that I would have loved to have had the option of a flipper tab on there as well. I'd love for him to offer a flipper and non-flipper version. A lot of brands are doing that right now. The big, uh, wh wh who just did that? Oh, um, Something Obscene Company. The, they just released their newest run and they're doing with and without thumb studs, with and without flippers. So you have three different ways to order one they're calling dual action, where you have the, the flipper tab and the thumb studs, then it's flipper only or thumb stud only. And yeah, it's expensive to do it that way with three different variations of, of each one. But having some with flippers and some without, like the uh, the Jaeger M, would be a really, really, really great idea. The carbon fiber used on this looks absolutely fantastic. This looks to mine eyes like it is fat carbon. I'm pretty sure that it is. If it's not, uh, I will be corrected, I'm sure. So the options that you're going to have on this, you can uh, choose either the one single carbon fiber version or there will be a few different micarta scale versions. 
I myself thoroughly despise Micarta. Do not like it. It's just a personal thing. I do understand that a lot of people love Micarta. So you guys are going to be super happy. You get a couple different color choices. For those of us that don't like it, we are left only with the carbon fiber. And it's a great, it's a very, very handsome look going from this stylized carbon fiber to the matte bead blasted bolster and then to the beautiful hand rub satin finish on the bevels, the hand rub satin finish on the flats, and then the bead blasted pocket inside. I think all the way around, really, really nice color choices or finish choices, I should say. Oh, it's so much fun to flick. <laughs> I love it, love it, love it. It's not often I get this excited about a knife, and and but it's for good reason. It's just so friggin' cool. It's so different without being ridiculously different. Let's give you some size comparisons here, and then we're going to take on some uh, weight measurements. Let's put it up against a more standard, traditional thumb stud opening EDC knife. This is my... Terrain 365 Invictus ATB, which is very, very often carried and very similar in its overall profile with its height, its thicknesses, its overall carryability, which I love using that word because it's not a real word and I think it probably irks a few people. Just grabbing my scale here. I'm coming back. I promise. I promise. Scale has entered the building. So, as you see, it is a practical size, even though it's a bit on the larger side. It's just, just a T90 little bit larger than the Invictus. Put it up against the uh, EMP EDC Nimble X, the larger size Nimble. As you see, it is almost identical. Back that up, back it up, back it up. Just a tiny little bit longer in the overall length. And one more... Chavez Ultramar Redemption 229, almost identical. However, this will be easier to carry. It's a little bit slimmer in all dimensions, a little bit easier to carry. Let's take a look at those thicknesses. Remember, I was talking about the blade steel thickness. This is 160 thou thick. This is 145. So it's not tremendously slimmer, but it is a little bit slimmer. And then obviously you see a very big difference in the uh, thickness on the titanium. The overall thickness is still fairly close, but that's still being made up with carbon fiber, which weighs almost nothing. So the, the Chavez is going to be significantly lighter in weight. Let's put that to the side. Uh, give you the thickness up against the Invictus. Nearly identical. Like I said, this is one of the best everyday carry knives that money can buy. And very, very similar in its all of its dimensions. But here you have more of a classic traditional look and more of a tactical look as well. And here you have this more futuristic, much more custom looking knife. So if you, you, you want that great EDC, but you also want a conversation piece, you're hanging out with your knife buddies, your gun buddies, your gadget buddies in general, and... You know, you're all like, oh, hey, this is what I'm carrying today, whatever. And you pull this thing out, they're going to go, holy shit, that looks like a really expensive custom knife. And yeah, no, it's not going to be super cheap, of course, but it's nowhere near spending $500, $800, $1, $1,200 for a custom, even though it looks custom and it doesn't look like anything else they've ever seen. Now, you might be wondering, Jim, how can I get my hands on one of these bad boys? Well... This is Sean's pre-production prototype that I'm playing with here. Within about two weeks of me uploading this video, you're going to have your chance to order this. I'm only putting this out about two weeks ahead of the drop. So you want to subscribe to the newsletter that uh, Null Knives does. Be on their website, but follow their Instagram is all you really need to do because Sean's very good about updating all the time. If there's delays on anything or if things came in early, whatever it is, he's always good about letting people know. Weight on this was at 4.1 or 4.7? 4.1 ounces up against the Chavez, which is six and a half. Significant difference. 
Now the Terrain 365 is uber lightweight, so I'm expecting that to be pretty close. Yeah, 4.5 versus 4.1, you're not even going to notice a real difference. Even though it's a little bit taller, a little bit wider, it's still dimensionally so close, and the weight is so close that it does put it in that category of being a nearly perfect EDC. Then we go from 4.1, what do we have here? 4.3 on the uh, Nimble X, which a lot of people are loving. They're carrying all the time. So you know if you can handle carrying this, you're going to be super fine carrying this. No issues whatsoever. So how do I feel about it overall, my personal opinions? I thought the previous release that Sean did, his very first design, the Raiden, was really cool. Again, it was a little bit different than everybody else's designs, but not so different that, that it was polarizing. I feel the same way about this. I like the style of this more than the Raiden, believe it or not. And there is just, there's no reason if you like complex looking, expensive looking knives that still have a great degree of function, there is no reason for you not to get this. And even if you're like me, where you are primarily a flipper knife person, and I really, really am, I strongly prefer flippers, you're still going to be perfectly happy with this. Once you deploy it the first time with the thumb studs or with the slot, you're going to go, yeah, it's okay that it doesn't have a flipper because it's every bit as fast, every bit as smooth, just it feels fantastic. I think overall the design is a 100% winner. It's hard to get excited about every knife that comes out here. Um, like I say, I'm very selective about the knives that I'm going to uh, review. And the second I had the opportunity to get this, I'm like, yes, please send it out. I have to review this, mainly because I have to feel it for myself. Because when he first posted the renderings, I messaged him instantly and went, that's it. That's, that is a winner. 100% winner. All the little lines here that you're not really seeing, where I just put my thumb right there, how the frame just dips down a little bit, comes back up. Everything about this knife is comfortable. This is wider and rounder than you would expect for a knife that begins in this wedge shape and continues with these very strong lines. It gets a bit organic back here. Why? Because that's where it's comfortable sitting in your hand. He could have stylized this to be just as stylized as all of this, but I, I fear that it may have compromised the comfort in the hand. He made some very, very good choices here. The checkering, which is the best way I can put it, on the inside of the lock makes it very easy to access, very, very easy to uh, push the lock over. I mean, I can't find anything about this knife I don't like. There's a little bit of sharpness right here where the scale separates from the lock. That's, the, that's just how bolster locks work. It's a little tiny bit sharp there, but it really shouldn't be obtrusive to almost anybody. I like the fact that he did go ahead and add the choil here because some people aren't going to want to just hold it back here. They're going to want to choke up just a little bit, and this gives you that opportunity. The jipping is perfectly done. The only thing I would say design-wise, not functionality, we've just discussed the functionality, the only thing design-wise that I'm not totally in love with are these last two markings on the backspacer. When you're coming down here, like, okay, that's cool. It's kind of like an arrowhead design, kind of neat. It's shaped like the, uh, the pocket clip. That kind of follows the theme. And then the next arrowhead gets a little bit smaller, and it gets a little bit smaller, and then you've got two hearts. They're hearts. I, uh... I don't know about that. I kind of feel like I should be wearing a Care Bear t-shirt when I'm carrying it. But other than that, <laughs> I'm totally, totally in love with the overall design. And that's something I can very, very easily look past. Won't bother me at all. 
With all that said, for me, it's a thousand percent winner. Um, I do not know the pricing yet, but I'm going to imagine it's within probably $50 of what the Raiden was. So for that, I would call it affordable. I would call it a must own. That's where I'm at. And that puts it in the same price range as all the knives that I pulled out here for comparison, actually. So if you already have invested in knives like that, you already love those knives and you want something that's a bit more aggressively designed, a little bit sleeker, a little bit slicker and cooler, you're spending the same amount of money roughly and you're going to get something that I think that is going to hold up and be special because very few people are going to have these. I don't anticipate him making this model for 10 years. I really hope he makes, you know, a few different variations, you know, a V2, V3, V4. I'd love to see some different finishes and different materials. I mean, doing this in an all murdered out, completely everything, 100% black with carbon fiber. <gasps> oh, yeah, sign me up for that bitch too. Doing maybe a small, small run of exotics. Maybe Damacore Blade and some Timascus or, you know, who knows? I'm just saying I think that this is a platform that will lend itself very, very well to a lot of different variations. He's got him limited in the beginning. Let's see what happens as the, uh, as the orders roll in. Let's see how popular it becomes to justify future runs. Remember, that's key. If you're looking at this and going, I like this, but boy, I wish it had this, this, or this for an option... Buy the version you like of this, because every one of these knives that sell and how quickly they sell out determines how quickly he's going to place a new order and add more options. Think about that. Just saying. All right, guys, I'm out of here for now. Thank you for watching, as always, and I'll see you on the next video.